everything But yet this world remains in sin Wars are still going on They have been since the dawn The dawn in the age when Jesus lived Sick or falling fast Our lives we're trying to grasp And some wait too long to change And naked we came from our mother's womb Here naked we shall leave The Lord taketh away In the name of the Lord We pray Fuck it, fuck it. 
Kids of all ages, it's time for your weekly fix of funny. Broadcasting on radio in Fort Bragg, 107.7 FM, KNYO. Grab a mimosa, take your pants off, and treat yourself to the sexy bald man who makes you tingle in your special place. I was talking about your heart. (laughs) He's wrong, but he's so right. He's brilliant. He's insightful, but also at times he's got the intelligence of a cup of dirt. Here we go, it's the Me, Mike, Self, and I show, starring Mike Bingo! Hello, 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 and welcome to me, myself, and I. I messed up on it, but I don't care. I'm going to just keep on talking, and I want my bird. That's what I want. I want my bird. Can you see it? Right here. I want my bird. Where is that from? Iron Man 2. I want my bird. Oh, you want your bird? No. I want my bird. Oh, I don't know what that is. Your bird. I don't care. Welcome, everybody. Hello. You like this loud shirt? It's kind of loud. It's louder than my energy, but it's okay. But welcome so much. Welcome, 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 welcome to episode 115. I am your host, Mike Betancourt, and you are on live stream right now on Me, Mike, Self, and I. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, 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 thank you. We have a very, very fun show tonight. We have a very funny comedian. She is so funny. I love working with her, and I'm so excited that she's on the show. She's chilling in the green room right now. It's the awkward cougar. Wendy Lewis is on the show tonight. I'm not lying. I'm just going to keep doing this because it's awesome because she's on the show tonight, and I can't wait. But you got to save all your comments to the end because at the end, then she'll be answering all the comments, and we'll have a lot of fun. I'm telling you, people, you are do Emma Mikers. You're doing a great job leaving comments because it makes you be a part of the show. And I'm glad that you're part of the show and it's fun. And some of these comments might hurt my feelings, but it's okay because it's the Me, Mike, Self, and I podcast. I don't care. My feelings don't need to be be hurt, but if it does, I'll just, at least I'm not like Will Smith, (laughs) right? You know, I was going to have a monologue about Will Smith and Jada Pickens Smith. And I was going to make fun of the red table. But you know what? I decided not to because, A, everyone else has done it already. They already ruined that fun surprise. Did you guys see your feeds on Twitter and Facebook and wherever you else do you see? There was people on Pornhub were making fun of Will Smith last week. How horrible is that? How do I know? I'm not telling you. I just want my bird. That's it. The reason why I, uh, I didn't want to make fun of Will Smith is because this is the reason right here. I saw this one meme, and this one meme made me go, nah, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to show you this meme. Let me show you this meme, and it's gonna, you're going to go, say the same thing. You're going to be like, yeah, I get it, Mike. I don't want to do it. I don't want you to make fun of Will Smith after this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that meme. Right there, look at that. Can you see it? It's it's Will Smith slowly turning into OJ Simpson. And I said, you know what? I'm good. So let's just pray for Will Smith that he doesn't turn into OJ Simpson and he doesn't kill anybody because it's 2020 and it can easily happen at any given notice. I wrote I wrote a blog about this. That's how important I was like, you know what? He could probably kill and he's gonna get away with it if he does. 
if he kills Jada Pickett Smith, he's going to get away with it. He has that neuralizer. You didn't see anything, witnesses. And then he's in the Bahamas, chilling, as he committed murder. So pray for Will. Make sure Will doesn't kill anybody or himself during these tragic times. So, all right, moving on. Normally right now, I would have uh, Drake Weatherman, my weather guy. He's been here for a couple of weeks, but unfortunately, he's having some, uh, re- he has responsibilities he has to take care of at home. So, uh, safe wishes to you and your family, Drake. Uh, whenever you do come back, you have a place here on me, Mike, Self, and I for you. But I had to think of something else because I wanted to do certain segments. I want this show to be fun. I want my bird, but I want to make sure that it's a fun show. So, I created this segment. Uh, with one of my impressions, Mr. Nick Nolte. So here's Nick Nolte's own section, his own segment called Nick's Fury. You're listening to Nick's Fury with Nick Nolte here on Me, Mike, Self, and I. This show is about the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if you don't like it, I don't give a damn. I'm Nick Nolte. Go f- yourself, America. Episode 1, Food. I know you're hungry and food is important to you. I get that. It's important to me. Hell, I can go for a steak at any given time. I love meat. Brisket, ribs, bull pork, chicken, ham hocks, duck, rack of lambs, pork chops, lamb chops, whatever you chop up, I'm going to eat it. Now stop right there for a moment before you get triggered and the cancer culture happens. I know it's murder, but damn it, we're Americans. We're human beings. We're savages. We're going to eat meat. It's what's for dinner. And don't point your finger at me with your animal rights acceptance speech. I'm going to eat meat, plain and simple. Hell, I'm not a monster. I know veggies are healthy for you, better for the environment, and we need to protect our animals. I get it. But the animal population is just as bad as human beings. Do you want me to eat my fellow man? Huh? I didn't think so. So get off my case and let me eat all the goddamn meat that I want. If I die from a heart attack, I die from a heart attack. That's my problem, not yours. I'm Nick Nolte. Go f*** yourself, America. (laughs) I'm laughing at my own stupid stuff. That's hilarious. Nick Nolte says you're going to eat meat. That's That's what, you know what? When I become an old man, I I really want to morph, morph, morph into Nick Nolte. You see the person right now, but when I become like 70, I'm like, oh, God damn, I don't care. I want my bird. That's what I want. Nick Nolte. <laughs> COVID, if I live that long, we'll see. We'll find out. I don't know. Everything's up in the. Okay, I don't want to bring it down. I don't want to bring it down. Time to lift things up, okay? It is time to continue with the show, and I have a very, very wonderful guest. Her name is Wendy Lewis, but before we bring her up, let's show everyone her Stand up set because a comedian only performs on stage, not on Zoom. That's just me, Mike Self, and I just saying that. So here is Wendy Lewis. I can only do that for so long, my knee will give out. How's it going, you guys? Thanks so much for showing up on a Thursday night so we can tell you guys jokes. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> my teenagers are getting really sick of me practicing my shit in front of her. So I go, oh God, not this again. Mom's trying to bark with me. Oh God, make him stop. <laughs> so uh, I'm known as the awkward cougar. What's up, Christian? What's up? I will. I got Gamefly Pizza Hut coupons. Let's make this shit happen. I know what you toddlers like. <laughs> that and some fucking what? Some skinny jeans or whatever? <laughs> yeah, big role. Uh, now that I'm like dating and stuff, I don't want to date a dude that's got skinny jeans. If I can't wear that shit, you shouldn't be able to. <laughs> I don't want to have to like, oh, go and sit down in a booth and be like, oh, I got an unzip the top of my pants to get in the booth. That's not sexy for anybody. Not unless you're going for barbecue, and then that's, that's how you know that's, that's probably your husband or future wife. <laughs> it's like, this bitch knows how to eat barbecue. <laughs> uh, 
so uh, did you guys have a good Valentine's Day? Yeah? Yeah, I can tell. You guys look all happy and rosy cheeked and shit. <laughs> I'm like, I want to go to that forest with all the dildos. <laughs> Suddenly, I really discovered I want to be a hiker. <laughs> Those things are expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I, I like uh, my dog chewed up one of my, my dildos. Yeah. It's a bummer day, too. <laughs> Coming home from work, you know, thinking you're just going to be able to double click your mouse, have a good time. <laughs> Dog chewed up your vibrator. I mean, who do you call to complain about that? Can't really call your mom. Your best friend, I don't think, wants that much information. <laughs> and then if you are dating anybody, they'll be like, well, how big was it? It's like, you don't want to know. <laughs> it's got a jitter in the garage. <laughs> it's got a Makita on the side. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So. <laughs> so, without further ado, let me bring to you my friend, your friend, the very funny, the very hysterical, Miss Wendy Lewis. Wendy Lewis is on the podcast right now. Hello, Wendy. Hi, hi. How you doing? Good. Oh yeah, Thank I forgot for I'm supposed to talk. And I'm so... <laughs> I'll be like... It's like, what are you? It's been a while since I've been around people, so I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Well, I don't I, know. before we before we get started, I want to have a virtual cheers. I'm going to open my my beer. Did you bring anything? You brought water. I am in water. That, you know what? That's why you're going to live longer. But it's I'm going to bougie open water. water. You can't have Corona without a luchador opening it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to be a good influence on the kids. Me or yeah. you? Oh, I don't know. You, Cheers. as you talked about dildos, that's that's a great influence on. The- <laughs> <laughs> hey, you picked the set, dude. I sent you a nice mellow lemon set. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, that wait, one. No, because I talked about penis in that one too. Never mind. <laughs> it's all good, Wendy. Thank you so much. Do you have some of your fans here already? You look at you have Miss Mickey Angeline. She's oh, I love her set. so much. Isn't oh my god, great? I love her. Yeah, she's, she's just amazing on so many levels. I'm like. What can't you do, lady? Really, what can't yeah. you do? Well, she supports this show, so thank you so much for being here. So, Wendy. Hi. About this, uh, how's quarantine treating you? How are you doing with everything? Huh? <laughs> all, you want to see my shrooms? <laughs> I got some shrooms. Yeah, I am. It's. What's it like on shrooms? I've never been on shrooms. Oh, my God. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I highly recommend it. <laughs> I microdose like- just to keep from, like, flipping out on people because... It's just weird. Time has like no meaning right now. I'm like, it? days just kind of blend into each other. And I'm trying to be a good person. And I always wear my mask. And um, I just go to work and come home and occasionally go to like, you know, Dollar Tree or Walmart or whatever, pick up supplies. But um, I just try to be a good person. And then my neighbors are like having like fucking blowout parties and shit. And I'm like, you, you guys know that people are like, Supposed to put masks on and like social distance. I know our next door neighbors like that too. They're all like joining up together and like, hey, hey, ha, 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 I know, ha, ha. yeah, just like that. And it's Once funny. I was in a Walgreens the other day picking up some stuff, and I had my mask on and everything, but I had a little tickle in my throat, and I went, <coughs> and everybody in line went, Phew. and I was like, don't worry. It's a weed cough. It's a weed cough. It's not That's COVID. Funny. It's cool. I, I, I almost had. I was in Walmart too, and I had a had a sneeze one time, and I could just feel. I was like, "Don't sneeze, don't sneeze." I was like this with the with the mask on, something like this. Well, I feel like it's like with that, like that. Remember that movie, Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Yes. <laughs> I feel like it's like that. Like one of us will cough, and then they'll be like, <laughs> just like that. All, yeah. <laughs> and then all these people will come out of the woodwork and be like, "Oh my god, we got a quarantiner!" Oh my god, we got a quarantiner. <laughs> <laughs> so she got, probably got you know like what is that? That stuff where your body parts would just fall off. Leprosy. Yeah, there you go. That's a fun one to get. Hell, why not this year? Fuck it. You know what? It wouldn't surprise (laughs) me if all of a sudden leprosy just comes back with the bubonic plague. Yeah. Uh, What else? What else else are we waiting for? (laughs) 
I was like, if dragons come through, I'll just be like, oh, fucking dragons. Okay, 2020. We need aliens. We definitely need aliens. <laughs> so that's what I was saying. I was like, how shitty of a president do you have to be that they're like, oh, yeah, so we're just going to tell people that aliens exist now because this president sucks that bad. We need a distraction. So like, you know that Roswell <laughs> thing? Let's, yeah. let's talk about that, shall we? Well, it's funny. I was making a joke about that at work. I was like, well, if the aliens come, I'm just going to let them know I do anal. It's cool. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> let's go. I'm good with my mouth. I got good oral skills. I won't tell nobody. So it's good. Just make sure I have some weed and some shrooms and we'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> you don't mind the probing? Is that no, what you're saying? You're like, no, I don't mind. It's, it. it's better than what the fuck is happening now. <laughs> <laughs> at least somebody's taking me on a ride on a spaceship. Okay. Right. <laughs> at least it's uh, normal and nothing's <laughs> changing on you or anything no, like that. No, no, You're getting up the ass right there from an alien. At yeah. least it's solid. It's honest. Right? It's good, honest, hard work. You know? It is. I would know. Transparent. <laughs> I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> no surprises. That's He's gonna funny. be like, Wendy, and I'm like, oh, I'm, this is what I came for. <laughs> no, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Take me to your. That's yeah, a, they were like double well, Wendy. See my size. You double Wendy. Like, first to be like this, but then they see my size and they're like, whoa, wait, it was like this. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> go like this real slow. Got a lot of butt cheeks. You gotta hold those up. <laughs> It just goes up real quick and, it's like and out. West side double wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this no, show is I'm great so, for the kids. I'm serious. <laughs> Aliens exist, and our president might be one of them. I don't know. Yeah, uh, if I was an alien, I would take human form and destroy this country. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Trump's doing, or or alien Trump. Who knows? But enough, know. about, enough about the T word. Yeah. How's uh, have you done any shows? Uh, yeah, one of the first ones I did back was in uh, Vegas with Tom Bomb on his psychedelic show. Nice, which is uh, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I it's so funny. I started like feeling the wall because the wall had like felt on it, oh and I was my like, God, oh, this wall feels so good. <laughs> and then I got all indignant because the wall didn't text me back or anything. I thought we had a good relationship, but <laughs> evidently it was one sided. I don't know. It was the it was the alien behind you. I don't have any hands, Wendy. <laughs> no, and but what was funny is I ended the last show that I did before we got shut down. I did it with at Laughs Unlimited, and I did it with Ty Rivera and a few other comics, and it was a great show. We had such a fun show, and Ty was just amazing. And then the show back was almost all the same, was some of the same comics that were on that show. We got to start back up with. So Ty came to the show too. And I got to, I made him laugh and that made me happy. Good. So it was good. It was good. And then, um, uh, yeah, that's, I did, uh, the punchline when it was open for a whole second, I did the all-star show and then I did, uh, laughs with, um, Jenny. So, you know, I miss it a lot. I just, yeah, uh, it's weird. All of us do. All of us and do. Don't worry. My, my Nordstrom store that I worked at got shut down too. Sorry, earthquake. <laughs> uh, so the whole store got shut down and it doesn't even exist anymore. So it's like, it was kind of surreal because it was like both of the things that I always kind of figured would always be there for me mm -hmm. were gone. Right. And I was like, whoa. God, what am I gonna do? I was like, I need to go get get some drugs, cause you know, let's go get some drugs. So I went to the weed shop, and um, I saw that everybody was working, and I was like, oh wow, you guys, hey, you're oh weed is definitely essential. You're still working. <laughs> I was like, y'all are hiring. I scrub toilets, and they were like, are you serious? I go, yeah, I'm not kidding. I need a job, and I can't not work. So um, I got a job at a weed shop, and I love the people I work with. Um, nice. What they're really doing? good to me. I am now what is considered a cannabis specialist. Oh. I graduated from University of Weed. so You are now a cannabis. Yes, Smoke your little bud inhale. tender grew up. You go like this. <laughs> mm, yes, it's a very... Um, yeah, I learned that from Ungayo. <laughs> he is a carnivore. From, yep. Yeah, I learned it from him. So I'll say stuff like, mm, that tastes like it's lemony with lemony. hints of mint. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's a lot of fun because now I can just apply the skills that I had from cosmetics and sales 
to what I would normally do, but now I'm just doing it with cannabis. So I'm selling like vape cartridges and nice edibles. And I get to educate people on that too, because a lot of people right now, right now are coming in for edibles because it's a lot more discreet than smoking. Cause a lot of people are indoors with friends and family that they probably can't smoke with, or if they right. have kids can't right. step away, but you can pop a little gummy in your mouth and you're like, Hey, Make sure those kids don't pick up those gummies. <laughs> I don't know. Some kids probably need a whole pack of them damn gummies. <laughs> <laughs> I have a joke about that. You know that where you talk about putting some candy in a pinata and taking it into a Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, and like all the kids are all passed out and the parents are all high-fiving me. They're like, this is the best birthday party ever. They're so You're quiet. like, yes, it was, it was in the pizza. It was all oh, It's in the organic. Pizza. <laughs> So what, what got you into stand-up comedy? I, you just came out on the scene out of nowhere. And uh, I just want to let you know that when I first saw you, you were very, you were funny, but shit. you were, no, hold on, hold shit. on. No, no. You were shit. very, you were very, uh, you had a lot of doubt in yourself and you had a lot of, you were very scared to be on stage, but there was a lot of potential. And then all of a sudden you just did this turn and then you just were zooming all the way through and you just became this, comedic phenomena who you are right now so what got you into stand up um it was actually a dare from working at nordstrom i was on the floor and i was a counter manager at the time and i don't look like the girls that work in the beauty industry a lot of those women are you know very statuesque they look like supermodels and <laughs> I like I look like a moose with lipstick on. So I'm just like I don't I'm not, you know, graceful you see. I'm just I'm awkward and weird, but I love helping women feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. So um I always make jokes like that and this one girl just got kind of you could tell it was irritating her. And my boss was standing right there and he goes, you know, you are a counter manager, you should probably take this job a little bit more seriously. Not that my numbers were bad. Not that I was not showing up on time or being good. It's just, I joke a lot. And she goes, yeah, you think you're so funny. Why don't you go tell your jokes across the street? She and she was like talking too, about, yeah. And everything. I can yeah. That. I can feel that too. <laughs> and she was talking about the punchline. Be somebody better. Yeah. Me. And it was punchline across the street at Arden. And then that, I went home that night. And I was scrolling on my phone and there was an advertisement from Laughs Unlimited for a comedy competition. And at the time I was doing a lot of um, media work with uh, Google Plus when it first came out. I was one of okay. their beta testers. So I had over 16,000 followers from all over the world and wow. I had really good engagement. So that's one of the stats that I used to get on the show. And she let me do it. And I literally just did a set off the top of my head because I've been in theater. So I know how to present myself on stage. That wasn't a problem. It was trying to figure out what kind of jokes to do, mm -hmm. you know, like figure out my personality and, um, you know, like actually connect and not just feel like you're just spitting shit out at people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So the first person who ever introduced me, um, was uh mark and um I, he it was so sweet too and so ever since then like with laughs it's it's had like a little you know little thing in my heart because jenny is tough but fair but mm. i've worked really hard to prove to her that i love this and that i really do apply myself and that I wanted to be a good asset to her and to Laughs Unlimited and that being good there gave me the confidence to be able to go to the punchline and then get past at punchline. And the first person I got to open for there was uh, Bobby Lee. Wow. And, oh, that yeah, was that in San Francisco? Was, yeah. Right? That's awesome. Yeah. I fell asleep a couple of times driving home, but it was worth it because <laughs> I was so tired because I was working we all day. You didn't kill the headliner as yeah. long as you didn't no, kill the headliner. No, because no, he stayed there. I right. drove back to, back to Sacramento every night. And there was a couple of times where I was kind of I was really, really tired. And I, I doze off and I didn't know how long I'd be out. And then all of a sudden I wake up and there's like a truck right there. I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, I'm not going to lie. It's amazing I've done, I've done how that like near death experiences like, 
it's better than coffee. It just perks <laughs> you right up. I know. Who knew? I've, Who I've knew? Done, I've done that. <laughs> Coming home from a, a Mantika show, and I'm just like this. All of a sudden, I'm just like this. All of a sudden, da, 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 ha, ha, ha. you just hear the da, 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 yeah, stuff like that too. So, but you we know, do it. Some, you did it. Somebody, it's worth it though. I know it sounds yeah. crazy, and there are days where I just be so tired, but. When you see somebody laughing like so hard, mm -hmm. it's, oh my gosh, it's just, I know like, I know it's crazy, but I know when I laugh, I can't think of anything else except for what I'm laughing about. So I can't think of my problems. I can't think, oh, this hurts or any of that kind of stuff. Right. I just think, oh my gosh, I'm having a great time and I'm laughing. So if I can help other people feel good, that's kind of like, I don't feel like I'm just on this earth, just taking up space and existing. And I feel like right now, not being able to connect with people, I feel kind of useless right now. So it's weird to, and I don't like doing the zoom shows cause it just feels. It's not a stand up. That's one it's thing. It's weird. I, I appreciate people who are talented yeah. enough to do that. And I, you know me, I've done TV. That's not a problem, but the zoom shows just, it feels so weird to me. And I know that, with everything going on, I might have to adjust to that, but I'm just not ready for it yet. I, th I think, uh, I think what I'm, I'm looking at the zoom shows and I'm seeing the best way to do it is treat it like stand up, have a microphone, have a cord, have a background, stand up dress, but doing like this, sitting down, sitting it down. It reminds comedy. me, you know, what it reminds me of, do you, do you remember public access? From the <laughs> yes. from the eighties, yes. this reminds me of cable public access because that's right. how bad it looks. Why and disconnected. Is it yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so when you see somebody standing there with the microphone, and you're like, so <laughs> tip your weight stuff. I'll be here all week. It just looks. I don't know. It looks like and a I, really cheesy dating app. Yeah, back in the just, love connection. <laughs> I like, dude, the videotapes. Remember when people used to record the videotapes and send them in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on, let me look for that. Let's keep there was heart to heart connections. Yes. Oh my god, I love that. Hold Those on. were so funny. Gonna... Love connection, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my, with... oh my god. Oh my god. With freaking stupid Chuck Woolery. He was used to be cool. Now he's all two and two. <laughs> two and two. We'll see you yeah. in two and two. Hold on. Here we go. He was all, I don't believe in COVID, but then his kid got COVID. And he was like, <sighs> I believe now. Hold on. Here we go. Weird how science works. Boom. Look at that. 30. <laughs> oh, my hey, God. What's up? Oh, my God. Oh, look at those and, oh, please. The boots. The boots. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> look at the <laughs> boots. They're not even tucked in. Look at this. Yeah, yeah that's sexy when a dude's willing to tuck in. That's 80s right there. Uh, His stonewashed uh, jeans uh, into it. <laughs> On the sunset strip. He doesn't and, have. Uh, I just have the option. He doesn't have sideburns low. at all. Yeah. It's because he's a he's probably a musician. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, I'm in a band. Like I'm in a band. Gazaris, the Troubadour, the Rock. See, passing out flyers all day long. Ah, <laughs> yeah. He called it, Wendy. He's a busker. He's a busker. <laughs> see, I just <laughs> knew it. You see, you see, the, you see the microphone? <laughs> Look how cheap the microphone. Hold on, I'll, I'll show you when they pan out. Just meeting these women on a strip. Just meeting these women on, on the strip. You, look at that microphone. You hold on. Did you hear what he said? It's very. I gotta tell you, it's, I've had like 40 or 50 like, one night stands just meeting these women on a strap. If that's not a Law and Order episode, I don't know. What. I know. Let's cue up that. Dun, 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 down, bam, 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 bam. Look at that. It's just like, yeah, I drugged them. I drugged them yeah. all. I drugged them all with his hair. She Boy. liked that bag over her head. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's all. You know, with these boots in my He's hair. He's like, hey, get in my panel band. Does <laughs> my rack smell like that? chloroform? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but look at that. You can see, like, he, he, you, you look at his face. You know he at least raped one but, woman. You know, no, 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 no. I feel like his hair could be on... A ballerina in the eighties. Oh God! You know, or uh -huh. like a, a like a, a soap opera star, because he's got that perfect like quaff, and then it's all long and oh, just beautiful. Yeah. But the way he and, sounds sounds like he just lives at home with his mom. Probably. Listen. It's well, true. I ask you to it's true, that. mom. <laughs> I, really I went on a date. And you say you had to slow down. And he's probably like yeah, forty. Uh, usually because he I'm, was thirty. With these women, I'm usually a very aggressive person. 
but uh, I usually shocking over the years. I'll let them do the initiating because you know I've been murder works better that play. way. Oh, I'm gonna stop it right there. <laughs> that was gross. You know, what I was like, I, see, I pegged it. I pegged it. I was oh like, oh my god, a, hold, a on, hold on, hold on. Matthew Robinson here. just said the best. <laughs> <laughs> his they, shampoo is chloroform. He's like, you like that? Like, Smell it. Smell my hair. <laughs> is it making oh, you sleepy? <laughs> oh my god! You know what? It's funny that we show that because I was going on to the next topic. Is because being a woman as uh, on the road is a whole lot different than a man on the road. Sometimes it's scary. I like right. it when I can go with other people. But have you ever had it, when uh, I go by myself where I get? Have you ever had a? Love connection, creepy guy moment. Yeah, I've had a few men corner me and grope me, you know. And luckily, other comics or somebody I'm with who will usually stay pretty close to me or see that I'm kind of like, whoa, hey, this person's a little too close. Or um, a lot of women like to touch my boobs too. They feel like it's totally okay to touch my boobs, and I'm like, my. Thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, oh. there are some people that take the liberty with my physical form that I'm not always comfortable with, but I don't know, I guess because of how garish my character is on stage, I feel that sometimes they assume that it's going to translate that way off stage too. You yeah, know, but there's still boundaries of meeting somebody. There's still yeah, like but a lot of people don't have that, especially if for... they're drunk, you know, this, come on, you've seen this. Yeah, <laughs> you almost got punched once at one of the shows. We just had to one, get just <laughs> one. <laughs> remember it was at that one place downtown, and it was that it was all black on the inside, and uh you were going in on that guy's girlfriend, and he got Hold on, let's friend. rephrase that. I was making fun yeah, of that guy's girlfriend. Good. Oh, was, the blue room. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He went. Went off. And that buff guy just like flipped out and then we were trying to get you to go out the back and we we're trying to like, no, we don't want him to die for his jokes. But yeah, no we've all had close calls because I feel like, uh, you know, I, it's weird. Some people just I don't handle their alcohol and humor very well. So you got to kind of hope just, that it just nothing goes wrong. But I don't usually feel that I pick on people to the point where I'm going to get at But I feel like some people do get a little too touchy-feely with me. Well, it's just I don't not, mind hugs, but... Right. But it's not just that. <laughs> not right now. Don't hug me right now. Right. I'm no kidding. <laughs> Seriously, like, COVID. COVID. Stay away from me. But no, but it's... Like, um, not only that, <laughs> it's... Uh, what is it? It's, you know, it's very dangerous and different from a woman to be on the road than a man. For just <laughs> Even if you're not... Uh, making people laugh on stage, just being on the road is just different and dangerous. Do you have any weapons or anything like that? You? Oh yeah. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. see that. I can see yeah. that. I can see that. I. I, I <laughs> you have nunchucks. What is that? Oh. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a, a taser. I was like, Damn, she got a taser. <laughs> oh no. my god. No, because knowing my luck, I would fuck up and accidentally tase myself looking for my cell phone or my purse or something. Like, eh. <laughs> I feel safer. <laughs> Get back. That's funny. That's funny. Well, it's funny because the first time my mom and I ever got pepper spray, we decided to try it out in the front yard just to see what would happen. Oh well, we weren't exactly downwind and it came right in back in our oh. faces. And we're like, oh, oh it works. <laughs> I'm stupid. Oh my god! <laughs> but it was so much fun. It, but it works. It's very spicy. So, uh, <laughs> if I you bet. guys have like a tolerance to spice, you might not want. You might not want pepper spray in your face. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm making the world a safer place, Mike. Just by pepper spraying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tested it out for you guys. There you it's go. It's dangerous. There's a reason. There's a guard on there now. You're right. welcome. It's, it's the You're Wendy welcome. Lewis guard. <laughs> <laughs> the WL guard. <laughs> That's funny. <I> was like, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I want to tell everybody this uh, one uh, wonderful, dangerous show that you and I did. It was in the foothills. <laughs> and uh, folks, first of all, it was, I did this show last year. year Talk before. about awkward, man. I can't even. 
hold on. Let me set it up. Let me set it up. <laughs> he's like, I, 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 uh, first of all, <laughs> I had I asked Wendy last minute. I was like, hey, Wendy, can you do this gig for me? Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, one of those heist gigs. Get in, get out, and go home, you know? And I did I the call gig. Them, I call those turn and burns. Turn and burns. Okay. <laughs> turn and burn. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I definitely burned and turned and turned and burned again. But the funny part was, um, it was like this rough, gritty bar show, and I asked you to to host, and you just came out there, guns blazing, smashing. They loved you. They even chanted. I swear to God, Emma Mikers, they even chanted her name That's during so her bad. set. Wendy, 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 Wendy. I mean, the crowd's like this, right? And they said, oh, "Let's bring up our feature act." And our, our, the feature act did he did a pretty okay job, but nothing like what you did. You had him up here, and then you brought me up, and I don't know what it was. They did not like me from the get go. I mean, they uh, what happened? Uh, a drunk lady came on stage. Uh, some people threw some ice. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't know. There was a lot. I was fighting off a lot of like, get back, get back, demons. And then they're like, bring Wendy back, bring her back. And Wendy's just sitting there like, oh shit, this is going bad. <laughs> but then you know, after I'm my like, set, Mike is never gonna book me again. Oh, you kidding me? No. I had, I, a, I had another comic one time say that he wouldn't let me go to work with him anymore because he said I made him work too hard. See, I appreciate so, how hard you work because people left on a good note and then you did some time after my set just to calm them down but i'm not you the told of, me to right but i'm not i'm not the, I'm, <laughs> i only I'm not did the type it because of, you told me to and i was like oh good. can we just go please <laughs> this is so weird <laughs> this is not, not how i want to die right in, in the food <laughs> i don't even have my weed with me that's in fucked up <laughs> but i'm not i'm, I'm not a the, jew i don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to ovens and stuff. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> but I was the type of comic to get mad and upset that you worked hard. You did your job. You worked extremely hard. And uh, do you get a lot of that besides that one comic saying that you're not, uh, you can't work with them because you work hard? You get a lot of that all the time? Yeah, because yeah, I think. Um, I, and that's I think just not some... male comics, it's from both. Male uh, not women comics. They just. Uh, most of them are pretty like uh, supportive, but there is kind of like a weird, I don't know. I don't try to compete with anybody mm, because right. I feel like all of our humor is different and it's appreciated by different people. Like really wealthy white people don't fucking like my comedy at all. The rest of the human race enjoys my comedy. <laughs> Middle America. So, so, yeah. So, for me, I always think, um, like, if I was working with somebody, I would want to be the best coworker possible. So, I want to make sure that I'm not going to talk about politics. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to uh, do crowd work. I'm not going to uh, bring the energy down. I'm going to be an asset to the show, whether it's hosting or you know, anything, because I want to make sure that when people come out of their house and they're spending money to enjoy a show, I want to be a showman and put on a good show. So the, it doesn't matter if somebody died that day. It doesn't matter if I feel really sick. It doesn't matter what is going on when I the stage is lit and it's time to go on. I want to give 150 percent. So that way the crowd goes, Oh my gosh, that's why I left the house. Right. This is why I left the house. So I don't like think about competing. I just try to do the best job I can. So how so, do you deal with people kind of blocking you from getting more work? Because, you know, it someone... frustrates me sometimes and I, it gets me a little down and I try to find other avenues to, to get my way out there. But I feel like uh, if I'm funny, it will happen okay. and the right people who want to like say, Oh, there, there's a door. You might want to go through it. And I'll be like, what? And then, you know, try to work my way to that door. Cause I don't have an expectation of anybody doing anything for me. Right. Um, I'd like to earn those things for myself, but you definitely it, would just, it. it would be nice just every once in a while, get a little, 
just a little, just a nice little, little push, just, just a, little, a little, little nudge. But the very first time I actually got like a W two form from Punchline for 2019, then I felt like a real comic, and I felt like, oh wow, I really am. I'm really doing this. I really am a stand up comedian now, mm-hmm. and it like almost gave it like a legit. It took that pipe dream that I had of you know where people are like, ah, oh, it's just. I just went to being stupid to no look. I really, I really did it. And it's, I kind of want to let people know that I, cause my whole thing was uh, after I lost a friend to pancreatic cancer and we we're supposed to make uh, movies together mm-hmm. and I was going to do special effects makeup. That was kind of my thing. And then after he passed away, I tried to go on to other movies and the next director I worked for, he uh, committed suicide so it was like the universe was telling me, oh, we don't want you working on movies. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I had to kind of like shift. And then that's when I was like, well, I'm going to become a Mac makeup artist. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try stand up comedy. And the Mac makeup helped me with my face and like my putting outfits together. Because as a woman, I just was like, oh, if it's all black. It's fine. Right. But they were like, they, they helped me like be confident with my apparel so that I could get on stage and feel more confident about myself and with my hair. And cause they were like, and I get excited when I would get a good outfit and the girls at work would go, Wendy, we see you. And I'm like, I know I'm growing up, but you know, cause it never made me think to think about that kind of stuff. Cause as a parent, you're like, I'm just taking care of my kids. I don't care about alive. I don't care about anything else. Yeah. So to actually focus on myself, it's kind of weird. Right. Um, but when I started doing that, it helped me have more confidence on stage. It helped me feel like I had purpose. Like I wasn't just taking up space because I felt like that's what I was doing. Like as a human being, I feel like you're supposed to kind of add something and I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. You know, and I can't like cure cancer or anything, but if I can at least try to be of a use while I'm here, that's what I'm trying to do, even with all this stuff getting derailed. Well, like you know? I said, Wendy, I've, I've I've witnessed your career from this, like I said, this timid self doubt person on stage. Like you can see the self doubt on stage. I don't know. <laughs> You, the jokes are good, but you like you could just see how scared you were because it is a scary thing. It's terrifying. Stand up comedy is scary. Well, but yeah, you, when I have to go up against like people like you, Mikey Winfield, Johnny Taylor, you know, and as a woman too, you have to kind of stand out. And one of the things that Mikey Winfield told me was like, he's like, you need to get your own thing. He's like, there's too many women in LA that sound like you. He's right. like, you need to get your own thing. And I started thinking about that and cultivating like a character and even one of mike um one of the other mics that you used to do shows with even he said i said what can i do to get more funnier and he said you know he's like get funnier and i was like okay and so when i had people kind of give me tangible advice i was like okay what can i do that's really gonna show these guys that i'm not just like some of these other people I see, they'll go to open mic every couple of times and they're like, oh, I'm a comedian, but they don't really. And then you see them kind of drop off for whatever right. reason. And I kind of wanted to prove to you and Jenny and kind of everybody that like, no, I, I, I really mean this. Is no, not you do. Bullshit. You know what? I'm, like, glad I'm really you, trying. <laughs> I, I am very glad you are a strong comic. I'm very happy that you are. Because, it means a lot coming from you, Mike. Oh, Thank you. my word's nothing. But anyways, I'm it very is. Well, that's why I show up for Jenny, and I always make yeah. sure I'm on time. And I make sure that, you know, even if you ask me to do a show up in the Ozarks, I show up ready to go. Oh <laughs> I'm like, let's still do like, it. You remember that day with Mike and Wendy? You remember that day? Yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was. You remember us working together on Zombie Train? Do you remember that? Oh my God, that was so much fun. That was that fun. little kid. Uh, that was one of the things that made me, I think, kind of um, love you that much more. Was when I saw that little kid. Um, he his little face lit up when he saw you. Oh yeah, as your soldier character. Hold on, I'm gonna find that. But go, and go ahead. And you bent down, and his little face just lit up, and I was like, Oh my God, 
No, yeah, my God, was, that was, was so sweet. I was Captain America for a day. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. It's <laughs> that's, that's things like that. Those little moments mm-hmm. that I love about what we do. Because when we connect with, whether it's a little kid or an older person or a regular person that's just on our level that gets what we get and mm-hmm. understands what we understand and we just make people laugh. It's, Here it's it is, such Andy. a fun time. You were the makeup artist on Zombie Train. That was so fun. That was a fun time we had. Yeah, that on was Halloween, great. and and we got to see different parts of Sacramento I'd never even seen. Yeah, before. yeah, no, that was awesome. By train, by and a train. I was in jail. <laughs> what? Being brave, <laughs> Sacramento, not Auschwitz. You'll be fine. <laughs> you should be good to go. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like a damn shit. Wait, wait, who's the zombies here? <laughs> I was like, why is, why is your zombie have a German accent? It's making me nervous. <laughs> so with, with, your, with your career and what you've been doing, don't worry, minus the, this whole COVID, you know, stage time cock blocker. But with your career and what you're doing. I was getting so close to you, saw All of us So were. close. All of us were. Uh, all of us were. I was. I was hitting it hard. Frustrated. I know. I was hitting it hard, and you know, I was up on that momentum too. I get it. But w- what is your advice for a new comic that's a woman that's scared, intimidated in this environment? What advice would you give her? Uh. <laughs> well, um, that's good advice. That's very I feel like I feel like any woman that has the the spiritual fortitude to even want to say something on stage, whether it's um, spoken word or songwriting, anything I feel that we do as human beings is is pretty pretty special. And I feel like anybody that takes the time to try that. That's why I had Vince's. I wanted everybody to feel comfortable at my open mic, whether you were a novice for the first or you know, you were just a basic, just trying it out for the very first time, or you were one of the pros like you that needed to work on something for 20 minutes. I wanted everybody to feel good there. Right. Um, So I feel like for certain women, if they already have that fire in their belly, to produce art in a form through comedy or any of that stage work. Um, Just think about it from the audience point of view. How would you want the audience to see you? How do you want them to receive you? How do you want to be seen? And I think if you think about it that way, uh, it'll help you manifest what you want. And remember too, that you're getting to do something that, in other places of, in this world, women aren't allowed to do that. Right. They're not allowed to get on stage and express themselves and say whatever they want. So you kind of have like this wonderful privilege, if you will, to do something that other people don't get to do. So do it with reckless abandon, do it with all the passion you can, because we're not always going to be on this side of the dirt. And right. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to make my time count while I can. So what do you think next for you? What's your next level for Uh, for your comedy? I'm trying to get legal to to make people laugh again. I'm trying to get my picture at laughs. Okay. So like that's my, that, and I want to get my name and be a paid comedian at comedy store nice. so i have like a vision of where i want to go it's a great but vision. for me getting my picture up at last i would cry because <laughs> then that would mean that jenny would feel like i'm really a part of the family but you and then you are you're part of comedy though that's the thing you see, are part cry. Of, it's okay no because it's, right. it's like i want her to know that I wanted to try not just for her, but for me. And I want people to go, you know what? No matter what you do in life, no matter what time you start, there is no time better for a do-over than when you're ready for it. So you should just, like, try it. Why not? You know, life's too short and weird. It is too short and weird. Try stuff, so... (laughs) 
I mean, it's like our, our life right now is like a Danny DeVito. It's just short and weird. It's weird. <laughs> That's funny. It's just weird. By the way, and, life's on. too short. You got to have some fun, you know? Right. By the way, Emma Mikers, uh, here, if you want to donate to Wendy, you donate to Wendy Lewis at Venmo at awkwardcougar.com. So make sure you Venmo her, send her a tip. This is That's weird, she, asking for money. You're I'm like, not. I'll show you a titty. No, <laughs> you're you're dedicating your time. Your time is worth it, you know. So thank I you, make Mike, sure, for yeah. even honoring me with the privilege of being on your show. It means oh, a lot to me. Show's not you, over yet. Hold on. You're one of my favorites. Oh, so. thank you, thank you. Hold I on. love Virtual, you, man. I love you too. Virtual cheers. Here we go. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> All right, let's check out some comments. What people are saying right now? <laughs> They're like, "Oh God, what's wrong?" Yo, with your right, face? I'm gonna cry too, <laughs> Matt. And Matt <laughs> never cries. I know Matt; he never cries. So then, let's see what Mickey says. Uh, no crying. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. I love her That's so much. Awesome, She's so, so great. Much. So She's such it, a what, badass. And Mike's or Matt says, "Mike, you're a pantomime in the toke like Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> smoking up from his yeah, indeed." <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> some some random person on Twitch says shrooms are good. See? Nice. Perfect. I agree. Perfect. It's oh from my nature. Goodness. My one of my navy buddies, Josh Foss. Yeah, buddy. Thank you. I for love the here. shirt too, dude. Thank you. Thank you. It's very loud, but it's awesome. I love it. I love <laughs> stuff. Do you like pina coladas? Do do getting caught in the grill. I don't know what the words are to that song. He brought, you know who you know who might know that song? This gentleman right here. This guy. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. <laughs> no, our friend. This guy, our, our wonderful friend. <laughs> I like pina coladas. And I like I like girls that don't talk back to me. Oh. And don't wear underwear. I don't wear underwear, do you? <laughs> 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 That's awesome. All right. Well, Wendy, before we go, I have this uh, segment called Sigmund Film. Uh, I asked for a list of your favorite movies, and oh, I, <laughs> and I just weird. started using this um, bit, and hopefully it'll work even more today. Well, I tried it last week with Butch, and I was having too much fun. But we'll try it again. We're going to try Sigmund Film. What we're going to do is this is a uh, cinematic therapy session. We're going to find who Wendy is with her favorite films. So one moment. It is time for Cinema Therapy with your host, Sigmund Film. We are going to take a deep psychoanalysis on your favorite movie. Lights, camera, own therapy. Let us begin, yeah? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh my god, Mike. <laughs> no, it's not Mike. It is Sigmund Sigmund Film. For <laughs> And we are here for cinema therapy. I yeah. I can't. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> uh, we are here to determine what. Yeah. Wendy's favorite movies are and determine her personality from these films. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nah. So your favorite films are as follows. Uh, Labyrinth, Pretty in Pink, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter is Dead, Tombstone, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Let me ask you, why? Did you pick <laughs> yeah, that is all over the place, huh? Yeah, for what makes you decide to like these movies? Yeah, you don't know. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I, I figured out why you have these films in these particular orders because these describe your personality. If you think, <laughs> listen, Labyrinth, 
When you're on stage, it feels like we are in a labyrinth. It feels mystical. It feels powerful. It feels amazing. It feels as if there is a troll peeing on stage because there's a troll that pees in labyrinth. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 And sometimes when Wendy makes us laugh, she makes us feel pretty in pink. No? Okay. Is that legal? I don't know. <laughs> that was one of your movies. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I got to keep going with this bit. I'm going all the way through. Whether it's good or bad, I'm sticking through. I'm sticking. This is sticking. I want my bird. Your I'm level sticking. of commitment is amazing. I am sticking. No matter how bad it is, <laughs> I got me Corona. That's why I drink Corona. Mm -hmm. You're brand loyal. <laughs> and keep going. So your other movies, Don't Tell Moms the Babysitter is Dead. That's how it is on the road with Vendi. Don't tell mom or she will kill you. And <laughs> she will bury you with a tombstone. And if you cross Wendy, it will be a nightmare on Elm Street. Elm Street. Ah. <laughs> that was hacky. I know. I got to work on it. I got to work on it. <laughs> I will work on it more and more and more. <laughs> I see where you're going with that, but uh, no, yeah. it, it needs a lot more work. <laughs> it needs a lot more work. I should have done this in the beginning. Why end off on a low note when I should end off on a high note? <laughs> but Wendy, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I got to work on this. That was. <laughs> thank you to everybody who watched and uh, was part of the show. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, no, you are, you are a huge part of our comedy community, and we are very thankful that you are part of this. I love you guys. And then, uh, okay, someone said Wait. something. Damn, bro, roll on the floor because it was that stupid. That's why. <laughs> That's, why. <laughs> That's why we do it, sir. That's why I was committed. I, I bailed out last time. but I, I didn't We really are not ashamed to make asses of ourselves. Someone's got to. We have to. <laughs> yeah. So. And I got a big ass, so. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Robinson, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Mwah. So everyone, uh, first of all, everyone that's commenting, thank you so much for being a part of this show. You are a big part of the show, and it means a lot. Thank you very much. Wendy, thank you so much for being on thank this you. show. Uh, did you have a Love good time? You, Mike. Love yeah, you thank you. Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. So before we go, uh, uh, do me a favor. Tell all your friends about the show. Tell them to watch the rebroadcast and just have a fun. And then uh, get ready because right now it's time to salsa. I want you to snap your fingers. Get ready. Get ready. Mm, 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 mm. Wait. Me, Mike, so Thank you, Wendy, for being on the show. Thank you, everybody, for watching it's the show. So really appreciate everything that you're doing. I'm going to work on that bit, whether it kills me or not. But if not, I don't care. We're just going to keep going. So thank you for watching. We'll it's see you next week.